Sabato 2 novembre, carissimi, ci vediamo a Verona per la commemorazione dei fedeli defunti. Portate con voi le immagini, le foto dei vostri cari defunti che metteremo al lato dell'altare e benediremo. Potrete fare l'offerta della messa in suffragio dei vostri cari defunti come Santa Madre Chiesa ci permette di fare a piene mani, pregheremo offrendo loro i suffragi che possono condurli in paradiso. Sabato 2 novembre a Verona alle ore 16.30 preghiamo e celebriamo la messa per i nostri cari defunti e poi domenica 10 novembre saremo a Cassino per tutto il piccolo resto romano e di dintorni partiranno dei pullman a costo zero gratuiti da Roma per quelli che non hanno come venire a Cassino verrete e sarete ricondotti a casa gratuitamente per le prenotazioni rivolgetevi alla segreteria di Radio Domina Nostra o al referente regionale del Lazio e, e poi ancora vi ricordo che il 27 dicembre io celebro l'anniversario della mia ordinazione sacerdotale, 25 anni di messa, il giubileo d'argento, giù in Sicilia, piccola Nazareth Ave Maria per quanto lo vorrete. Abbiamo vissuto un momento di grazia lo scorso 6 ottobre a Milano con migliaia di fedeli, il piccolo resto c'è e il popolo dei rosarianti con la corona del rosario in mano. Andiamo avanti e preghiamo per il trionfo del cuore immacolato di Maria. Verona, 2 novembre, commemorazione dei fedeli defunti. Roma, Cassino, 10 novembre con la possibilità di venire con i pullman gratuiti da Roma e poi 27 dicembre vi aspetto giù in Sicilia, tutte le altre tappe saranno rese note nei giorni a venire. Sia lodato Gesù Cristo e avanti con Maria. May Jesus be praised and onward with Mary. Have a good and holy day, dear children in the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, and in the chaste heart of St. Joseph. Welcome back to our morning segment, Saints and Coffee. Today is Friday the 18th of October, and the Church celebrates the liturgical feast of one of the four evangelists, St. Luke, who was a disciple of the Apostle Paul, as we know, an excellent, excellent doctor, a learned expert in the Greek language, who writes his gospel for the pagans, where he particularly emphasizes the themes of salvation and the mercy of God, St. Luke, whom we will return to. He was called the painter of Mary because, according to tradition, he was also an artist and dedicated his aesthetic genius to faith, having, as tradition holds, produced a couple of icons one of which is preserved, if you didn't know, in Bologna, in the famous sanctuary of San Luca, which overlooks the city of Bologna. Then the other icon would also be that of Sestokova, produced right by San Luca. Luca is truly a painter, even in having created, as we will now say, the gospel. We'll talk. Congratulations to all those named Luca. Last night, there was an interesting episode from my book, The Symphony of the Lamb, a commentary on the book of Revelation by St. John the Apostle. We saw the fourth letter of the sevenfold, Kyrios Basileus, the risen Christ Emperor, to the seven churches of Asia Minor. You are invited, if you haven't followed it, to catch up on it in the Radio Domina Nostra playlist on YouTube, where you can find the opportunity to replay it. This very interesting catechesis from last night, Today is Friday. I remind you that it is the day of the Passion of the Lord. It is Jesus who dies on the cross for us. And so it is the day when the little remnant puts into practice the two practices that are dear to us. Abstaining from meat, no meat is eaten, nor its derivatives, and the pious practice of the stations of the cross, which I recommend to you, to personally meditate on the Passion of the Lord. I would also add the desire to unite our sufferings, our crosses, our pains, the struggles of this earthly pilgrimage with those of Jesus on the cross for the salvation of the world. And then I remind you, being Friday, that this evening at 9 o'clock, there are the pioneers of the Rosary. Now more than ever, it is essential to pray. It seems on the horizon that it seems appropriate to intensify the prayer. We are preparing for the two upcoming events tomorrow and the day after 
namely the meetings in Montecatini Terme tomorrow afternoon at 4.30. We are at the Tuscany Inn Hotel, 86 Cividale Street, Montecatini Terme, for the meeting with the small remainder of Tuscany. And then the day after tomorrow, Sunday, the 20th of October, we will be in Bologna for a day of grace with all the small remainder from Emilia, Bologna, Romagna, but for anyone who wishes to join. Morning, 8.30. The room will be open for the meeting at the Living Plus Hotel. No reservation is needed. And then at 9.30, about the confessions, at 10.20, procession with Madonna statue. At 10.30, the Holy Rosary. At 11, the Holy Mass celebrated by Brother Celestino. And then in the afternoon at 3.30, after the break for lunch, there will be a round table with Professor Diego Fusaro, Dr. Andrea Cionci, and I don't know if you know him, Father Minutella, the anonymous, the unnameable, the unnamed Father Minutella. By the way, Father Celestino gave an important sermon this morning. We must immediately clarify against all the wicked who are upon us, the deceitful, the suspicious, that the sermons of the association, each person prepares their own with utmost autonomy and freedom. For example, I'll say it straight away, I wouldn't have addressed the themes with that clarity and frankness that the Franciscan friar, a radical observer of the rule of St. Francis, Brother Celestino, has chosen to tackle. At this point, however, since he has addressed them, I don't even mind, I must tell the truth. It will be appropriate for us to listen to him in the key passages, so I will divide this reflection of mine. With the homily of Brother Celestino, and then also today's theme, which is St. Luke, the painter of Mary and the primacy of the gospel in the church. I remind you of the two appointments that are highlighted each time on Radio Domina at the beginning of each broadcast, which are on the 2nd of November in Verona at 4.30 in the afternoon at the Montresor Hotel Tower in Busolengo. It's not necessary to book, there's no charge. However, you can book a Mass for your deceased loved ones by calling the Radio Domina Nostra office. Bring photos of your dear departed, which we will place beside the altar. Then, on the 10th of November, Sunday the 10th of November, we will be in Casino, and all day in the morning there will be confessions. The program will be detailed later, although it is more or less always the same. We will depart from Rome by coach. The first one is already full, and it is free both ways, so hurry up and sign up. While we carry out these significant initiatives, I remind you to support the project. The bank details are in the description, and the postal account is also in the description. Please remember that this project now more than ever needs your help. It seems to me that there is a lot of anger around after the acquisition of Piccola Nazareth. They sang victory once again. They don't want to believe me. God allows it when I tell them, the Virgin Mary sends me, the Holy Virgin sends me. I'm not here of my own initiative. I would have stayed at home. I would have left the parish because in this game, first the Pampero, then the Pampero, whoever can understand, I would never have been there. And so I would have withdrawn to a private life, but I would have had my library and my books. Instead, the Madonna took me and threw me into the fray. I've been telling you for years, they're trying everything. Those powerful ones, you know, the brave ones who confront you openly. What men, what men indeed, they're trying everything. Now, since in summer they celebrated victory once again by acquiring little Nazareth, there it is, there it is. The thing is, we're more alive than ever. We've even grown in number, it seems. We've actually grown in number like a small remnant. And there is no alternative. There is no alternative to the path of the small remnant. Otherwise, everyone can go where they wish in the serenity of confrontation with all. But there is no alternative to the small remnant because it is willed by God. It is not a human work. It is not a political score. It is not earthly planning. It is not a strategic organization to replicate something we dislike. It is divine work, and no one can solemnly stop it. So Saturday and Sunday, in Montecatini, and then in Bologna. 
I remind you that next week, on Saturday, the 26th of October, we will be in Udine, more precisely in Cervignano del Friuli, always at 4.30 in the afternoon. And on the following Sunday, the 27th of October, we will be in Austria in Graz with dear father Johannes and the tiny little remnant that has survived the storms that now and then, indeed the storms, Italy here in the central northern part is truly enveloped in darkness. It will not be a breeze. Last night, a couple of little sisters trembled because there was a lightning bolt that lit up the sky. They also made me feel quite tender. These ones do things from another world, because you know there are those who stay down in Sicily and those who accompany me instead. And those that accompany me do things from another world, but then women, my goodness, the mystery of a woman. But then they do things from another world that a man just can't keep up with the pace a woman can manage. But then a lightning strikes, and you see one of them trembling like a leaf, almost needing to hide under the bed. Naturally, the nuns in Palermo, I think, will have understood who I am referring to. All right, all right. I think I've said it all. I'm saying, let's support the project, because it's very important. Otherwise, it won't move forward as there's a need. This financial aid, as I said, the international bank account number changes sometimes for reasons you can guess. There it is. The new number and the postal account. Now, unexpectedly in this episode, I was celebrating my mass in my little room, always thinking of all of you from the little remnant so that you may persevere. And I place you all in the chalice, especially today, being Friday. I pray for the sick and the suffering, that they may find peace in their hearts, that they embrace the cross, kiss it, and confidently with the rosary under the gaze of the Madonna, move forward. And I want to say something interesting. This image was given to me, so I tell you about this Madonna of Pompeii behind me. I have this Madonna of Pompeii as my cherished image. Just look, she accompanies me on my journey because this is not a screen produced by the direction. It is truly flesh and blood. And of flesh, as the son of Bruno Cornacchiola would have said, who you remember was the first to see the Madonna. And when the vicariate asked him, the Monsignors of Rome, was it made of paper, cloth, or plaster? Because they thought he was obviously referring to the statue. And he said, the child from the Roman of Rome, no, no, it was a flesh. This is not a flesh, but it accompanies me. All right, then. Now let's go and see, let's produce now, if the direction is ready, the homily of Brother Celestino. Is production ready? Here we go. Let's broadcast the homily. I'll repeat a couple of things, and I'll mention it to my fellow members of the society as well. It is well known that every priest has the absolute freedom to preach as the Holy Spirit suggests to him. So there hasn't been any, let's say, none, how do you say, pre-agreement, pre-agreement. Everyone, when they celebrate, during the week celebrates and says what the Holy Spirit suggests to them. And today, Brother Celestino, who is the lightness of the gospel made flesh, becomes precisely for this one who runs away from compromises. Look at him. Where he sees compromises, he flees. He is a fugitive from the world's compromises. He loves transparency. Those who know him know it. He is the only one who is not targeted. Apart from the fact that they threw him out of the convent, he begs to be excommunicated, and they haven't even suspended him a divinus yet. Yes, they have suspended him a divinus, and that's it. And he is a brother who does not love compromises. He wants sincerity. He wants clarity and transparency where he sees lies, deceit, falsehood, and therefore compromise. Brother Celestino leaves. It's the transparency of the gospel. Let your speech be yes, yes, no, no. I tell all the detractors of this world, known and unknown, disguised or undressed, that I am not alone, thank God. I have a council of priests, presbyteral, who support me, and I must say they are giving excellent advice about everything that we are naturally experiencing. 
Clearly, this small group founded by Don Minutella is being targeted for destruction and annihilation from all sides. However, now let's listen to the homily by Brother Celestino. Let's start and maybe pause for comments. Cold, shut the window. I'd love to explain the gospel in first reading. I don't think I will, because we are in the apocalypse, and now and then I give a war bulletin. That is, I share my thoughts on some internal issue up to a certain point to the little remnant. What I'm saying is just my opinion, although I believe I'm not the only one who thinks what I say. I must say that I believe in the good faith of everyone. Why? Because I want to go to heaven. Jesus said, do not judge so that you will not be judged. That is, so that God does not judge you. To judge means to condemn in this case. So I don't want to judge anyone to avoid being condemned by God. You do as you please. If you want to go to hell, condemn everything and everyone. That said, I say, journalists should be journalists. It would be nice if they wrote on the front pages of the Republic, the Evening Courier, the Press, the Messenger, and the rest of the Carlino that Don Rodrigo is a false pope. At least 20 grand. Catholics in Italy say he is a false pope. And the priests should be priests. The priests come to recognize that Don Rodrigo is not the pope. They know what they have to do. Journalists, if they are needed, only serve to give as much publicity as possible to the news. What should a priest do if he recognizes that Don Rodrigo is not the Pope? He has several options. The first option is to stay where he is. Obviously, this situation won't last long because the zealous faithful will inform the bishop and the bishop will either let it be, as seems to be the case with Father Crescio or Father Giuseppe in Romania, since the bishop himself is very doubtful about Don Rodrigo, or he will intervene. In the case of Don Ramon, he intervened with the quickest excommunication in history, within 24 hours or even less. When the bishop intervenes like a puppet of Satan, the priest must not be caught off guard. He must find himself a place to stay. But this is a technical problem that's easy to solve. The biggest problem is who to team up with, given that there are now thousands of priests around the world who do not recognize Don Rodrigo. Various hypotheses. Someone is teaming up with a prophetess. I wouldn't want their spot. Some others are minding their own business. As far as I know, Don Enrico Roncaglia and the other German or Croatian who celebrates in the hills of Vicenza and many others around Italy and the world. Many others. It's a good choice. If their conscience leaves them at peace, it's the best choice to stay quiet without any problems. I would gladly do it too, if my conscience would allow it. The problem is that the church is not an archipelago. It is not a collection of islands. However, in the current confusion, I don't feel able to condemn such priests as long as they are awaiting another short-term solution. 112,000. It seems that we are this number in the world, 412,000. Priests in the world make 412,000 aisles. However, it must be said that of these 412,000, many are in communion with Satan, that is, with Don Rodrigo. Another possibility is the Marian Priestly Association, and it's the best solution. There is a guide, quite charismatic, not without flaws. He said it himself, it's not me saying it, he says he has many flaws. There is a group of priests who have already gone through many internal trials within the association itself, especially due to the departure of three priests, Father Vincenzo, Father Gebhardt, Father Natale, or if you prefer, Father Enrico Roncaglia. No one tell me these are due to Father Alessandro, 
That's false. We have a lot of work, not to mention a grueling workload. I don't see why we shouldn't join in. Anyway, if someone really doesn't want to be part of the association, they can accept Father Alessandro's proposal made in Lugano the other evening, which is to create a confederation of priests who are not in communion with Don Rodrigo, but who want to work in unity of purpose regarding pastoral work. It won't be easy to create this confederation because tensions may arise with the association. Anyway, it's to avoid scattering and divisions, which is what Satan in the Vatican wants. In fact, it doesn't affect individual priests who are no longer in communion with him. Perhaps there are other possibilities when a priest leaves, but I'll stop here. What absolutely any priests who no longer recognize Don Rodrigo as Pope must not create confusion and division within the little remnant because that is the game of Satan. Father Fare, or whoever follows him, because I am certain that no others will emerge, must absolutely not be allowed to celebrate the sacraments for those of the little remnant in Bergamo or elsewhere without having clarified his position with the association. Celebrate in the convent as I did or elsewhere where he can do so. I would never have dared to go into someone else's garden. I only went to little Nazareth because I was invited. I remember that from February to July 2022, I celebrated in little Nazareth only because I was invited. I was not yet part of the association that was formed on the 5th of August 2022. Invitation, invitation, not obligation, let that be clear. Invitation, motu proprio, meaning my choice, all the little rest. To not participate in the masses of Father and Fare, or anyone else who wishes to join, unless they clarify their position with the association beforehand. Invitation, I repeat, and not obligation, you can also go to the masses of Father and Fare. There was a small break, perhaps due to technical issues, but all in all, I find the homily by Brother Celestino, which he freely decided to articulate on the current situation, very interesting, especially when he recommends that we respect the small remnant and the association, and that no confusion should be created. If one wishes to proceed alone, then let them do so. However, allowing the association not to lag behind, since we have so much work to do, as Brother Celestino says, it's exhausting. I don't know if the final part can be reproduced. I asked the director to listen to it. I believe in the small potential remains, but not in the alternative ones. I'm going back to using the image of the bonfire and the arms. If you remove the arm from the fire, it will stay nice and red for a while but then little by little it goes out. So it will be with Father Christmas, Father Gibhart, and others. Together we would have been stronger because even the bonfire without that little ember that is gone becomes weaker. I still remember Gamaliel saying, if this work is from God, it cannot be stopped. If it comes from men, it will soon dissolve. I prophesy strongly that all the small alternative remnants, except in the case of good faith, are destined to perish. He who lives will see. I've finished my inner parish notice. Since it has been quite lengthy, I have also finished the sermon. I'm just adding that today we remember St. Luke. He is the one who, in the Acts of the Apostles, says that the first Christians in Jerusalem were of one heart and one soul. Madonna's presence, I think, it also tells us that there was a council in Jerusalem to find a mutually agreed solution regarding Jewish customs. We can also hold a council among all the priests who have forsaken Satan, and there we can decide how to come together. The ideal is the fellowship. But you can also find another formula, like that of the partnership and the confederation. 
My fear is that we will end up with first and second class priests. Now I'm trying a solution that seems paradoxical, but I'm just saying. The problem would be solved if we had six bishops very well organized, but by whom? It's Father Alessandro, a great prelate. But I'm waiting for a sign, you know. And the others would be part of the Catholic presbytery for now, worldwide, that is, not divided into dioceses. Anyway, the problem exists and can only increase because I am sure that more priests will come forward. May the Madonna, Mother of the Church, help us find a solution, but it cannot be to go digging up the dead who do not belong to us, because that comes from the evil one. Praise be to Jesus Christ. This was the homily today by Brother Celestino during the 8 o'clock morning Mass on the Feast of St. Luke, in which he wanted to draw attention to the situation that has arisen. Following the outing of Father Faré, who has so far received significant media attention, well, it's only Don Minutella who doesn't exist for many, and Don Minutella doesn't exist. They fear him. What I wanted to say, especially in light of Father Celestino's recent words, is the following consideration. Father Faré made this statement last Sunday, where he does not recognize Bergoglio as Pope. I will not hand over the lion. That's the name of the document with which he, Father Faré, makes it known to everyone that he is leaving. They will probably expel him from the Order of Carmel, which saddens us greatly. These Stalinist methods of the Church of Mercy, with a K, after that, I know already, because Father Fare, I think he will understand that we find out about things. He's already going around celebrating from Sunday to today, Friday. He's already going to the Lombardy area to celebrate. With which faithful? Who are these faithful? Because it's interesting, and here Brother Celestino is right. It's interesting to understand the makeup of these faithful who go to Father Fare. They're the faithful remnant, but maybe Fra Celestino's call should be heard, then do as you wish. Until Father Fare clarifies why he doesn't enter his alliance, it's another matter. So to avoid any misunderstandings, it is already possible, but not necessary, for you to doubt knowing that Father Fare might have sent me, for example, the clarifications regarding the reasons why he does not enter his Dalizio. But why exactly? It's in private form. It's our matter. I only extended it with his permission to the priests of the Sodalizio, but we have decided together, since there is a community we lead, that we cannot resolve it solely in the chamber of charity, because then people want to know. So, I don't understand how it's possible that while it was announced that it will take time to explain the reasons, as Father Fare said, now there is this rush. Who is behind this urgency? Who's pushing for some sort of alliance right now? I just want to say this. We are waiting for Father Fare to clarify publicly as well as privately. Privately, I can respond with my fellow brothers because I do not act alone. We are a collegial body of priests from the sodality and we will have the opportunity to respond privately to Father Fare regarding his doubts. However, what we have decided to do is to wait for him to publicly explain, as he promised, when the time comes. After all, we are not in a hurry. We have a packed schedule. He should explain the reasons when necessary. From this moment, until he explains it, he has mentioned a couple of times that he does not want to be pressured, and he sees that, as always happens, the small remnant is aggressive, it's violent. He didn't say it, or maybe he did, I don't know. Anyway, they said we are aggressive, that we are violent, that we are fanatics. I wouldn't want another small remnant to be forming, an alternative to the existing one, and those responsible will answer to God. Attention, everyone should be very careful. I wouldn't want those annoyed by Don Minutella, those who don't want him because they are pushed by Satan. I'm not talking about Father Fare, just to avoid misunderstandings, because I wouldn't want to be misunderstood. I'm talking about the lay people. They are from the small remnant, no to Pope Francis. 
But we don't want Don Minatella either. But why don't you want Don Minatella? Why not? It's this. So from the moment Father Fare, from now on until, this is a collective decision, Father Fare, which I'm making public, as we expect you will also do publicly when you decide to explain the reasons for your refusal to join your alliance. How nice it would have been if you had simply done what Don Ramon did, who certainly is not a fool compared to you. He is not someone who can be easily fooled by a Tuscan like him. And speaking like this, soon you will be Lombard. He is Tuscan. I am the poor Palermitan. That's Italy. Italy is awakening. He comes from the Dolomites. What do you want? Don Enrico brings together Apulia and Upper Lombardy. You understand? So, I would like to say, Father Fare, to avoid any misunderstandings, your doubts that I now know seem to tell you the truth. Marginal, the essence is that Bergoglio is not the Pope. There are thousands of faithful who want the sacraments, not in communion with Bergoglio. Why must he act alone? Why didn't he? It seems that in this case, Don Ramon deserves national applause. National applause indeed. And as you can see, dear Father Fare, very well, that while his brother Celestino said today, 24 hours later they excommunicated him, and they are still there discussing with you. Because to the enemies of the Vatican, I'm sorry to say, they are not only interested in the fact that you said Bergoglio is not the Pope, but also that you mentioned you do not uh, agree with Don Minatella, that you do not join the association, even though you seek forms of collaboration. In the Vatican, they like this melody. They would be willing to lose half of the clergy as long as they act independently of Don Minatella. Divide and conquer. Is it just me, idiot? Don Ramon has made an extraordinary choice. In the coming out he did on the 31st of December 2023, he communicated to the faithful, just like Father Fare did in the homily, that he, just like that, Bergoglio is not the Pope because he is blessed. The exact same things that, if I may say so, there's the imprinting. Keep that in mind. Dominatella has instilled the imprinting. Say, write, talk as much as you like, but these priests in your device have the humility to say, Father Alessandro, you are the first. You are ahead. You are the one who did these things first. It's pointless for anyone to act as if they are discovering hot water for the first time. He already said it, Don Minutella, that he has received two excommunications and a reduction to the lay state, and that he is the number one enemy of these scoundrels who are where they are. Don Minutella is the number one enemy. Anyone who says that Bergoglio is not the Pope, but does not ally with Don Minutella, is applauded by the Vatican. Because divide and conquer. I don't know if you know the story of the Roman Empire. We are disgusting human beings. We are pathetic. Thank God for His grace. And I'm not refined or elegant. Please be patient with me. What can you do? So I was saying that during the era of the Roman Empire, how many plots were there, right? So how many times has there been someone who led well, right? And for example, let's set aside the Roman Empire because let's move on to the true story of William Wallace, the Scottish nationalist who built an army from nothing for Scotland's independence. All right. He organized an army of elderly men against the powerful English army. But the motivations that William Wallace, as a charismatic man, could provide to the defeated army managed to rout the English forces. So the King of England, with his men, is considering the only possible way to defeat William Wallace. The traitors. The conspirators, there always needs to be a Judas Iscariot. And who knows, we might have more than one, even an unsuspected one. You need Judas Iscariot because that's the only way it can be done. Divide and conquer. At the moment when there was William Wallace's collaborator, who being the son of a Scottish nobleman, said you stand next to William, but do your own thing, not with him. Those things, 
you see, and the enemies knew it. They paid the Scottish nationalist who was next to William Wallace, but who was thinking for himself. Because when you divide a project, you destroy it. Got it? So it's clear that, unintentionally, one is risking playing into the hands of the enemies. I'm saying this. It wasn't planned. I don't care if you believe me. That's your problem. God knows I'm truthful. I had prepared, even put another title, but no space left. Fra Celestino's fault this time, he must confess. So what I want to say is this. Don Ramon did that audit, and then he did the thing, like in childbirth, the most natural thing. And Don Ramon can testify that it's not like we had close encounters of the first, second, and third kind. Even Brother Celestino can testify to that. Just one lunch meeting, remember? When we came to Tuscany, I strongly wanted, through the regional representative of Tuscany, who is Scottish, by the way, whom I greet, to organize this moment. I was coming from Veneto, had to go down, pass through Tuscany, and I stopped right in the city of Florence. We arranged to meet in a restaurant. We were sitting at the table, Fra Celestino, Don Ramon, and I. We put it on the table. In fact, I said, Don Ramon, listen, you are Tuscan, so that's Veneto. You have that Venetian pragmatism. You are the quintessential Tuscan. So as a Sicilian, I tell you, hurry up, tell me what the difficulties are, trivial difficulties, as he himself then realized. Because essentially, why wouldn't someone else have done the same? Why wasn't this done earlier? Now, we take cover. Celestino means this. I ask my friends not to attribute to me the sole responsibility for what I am saying. Take it up with Fra Celestino. He is to blame, as we say in my part of the world. And so Don Ramon did that act because it should be the most obvious thing that we ally and move forward together. We're already few. The faithful are thousands because otherwise it creates confusion. I have already heard that Father Fair is celebrating in the areas of Cremona and Bergamo. With which faithful? Who are these faithful that are admitted by Father Fair? He says he will present them, if I understood correctly, but, well, I understood correctly, but I mean it's right for people to wait to know exactly how things are. Anyway, Father Fair has already said he will present a, how do you say, a, I can't find the term, he will appeal, I can't find the term, he will present the appeal. What about us? Peppa Napa of Italy. Don Enrico Bernasconi, Father Fare, who is he to you? He's a priest who deserves respect. Wouldn't it have been useful to contact him? And tell him, look, Father, I'm here to convey the suffering of the priests of the association that you have caused especially since now you force us to take measures, saving both the goats and the cabbage, because we want to remain friends with you, but at the same time, we need to set some boundaries. Total chaos, otherwise. She didn't want it, but made it. I agree with Brother Celestino on this, Father Ferry. I'm sorry. She certainly didn't want it, but she created confusion. But why didn't she contact Father Don Enrico Bernasconi, who, I remind you, Father Fair is not a fool, an idiot, while you appeal, Don Enrico has decided not to. We needed to listen to the reasons first and also give a bit more emphasis to this choice, just in case. I know you. She has used extraordinary words towards me and I thank her. But there are also the other priests. Don Ramon is there waiting for his laicization, Father Fare. Excommunicated a day later. She spoke last Sunday and that alone should make you think. This alone should make you reflect. She was even more incisive than Don Ramon. But Don Ramon, since he said he was joining the association, was excommunicated 24 hours later. She, on the other hand, as far as we know, is still in limbo after a week, which is even worse, if I may say so, because, poor soul, may St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila protect her father, and especially Our Lady of Mount Carmel, because it is still unclear what will happen to her whether she will remain in the order or not. 
find support from some bishop, as long as it's not with Don Minatella. But did they tell him beforehand that they would give her guarantees, as long as she isn't with Don Minatella? Because I tell you, Father Faré, you are an excellent priest. I don't think you're naive. That they would promise her Maria and Monti, even if she told you that Bergoglio isn't the Pope. At the moment, you are creating the confusion that you are creating within the little remnant, and not just within the little remnant, but also within a broader context, which is that of the relationship with enemies. Now know what some foes write? I'm attacking her because I won't accept her as the great prelate. There are always worms in the ground, unfortunately. In the carcasses, when a bird or a cat gets hit, the carcass remains there. And who goes there? Birds go there, the ones that eat this stuff, ants go there, flies go there. Unfortunately, that's how it is. I would be doing all this because I don't want her to join the association. Unfortunately, it's clear that there's a very complex general situation. There will be those from the small remainder who do not accept what Brother Celestino said today. Too much haste. But whose rush is it? Our side or the other side? Who is arguing? So I would like to say I couldn't talk about St. Luke today. I would like to conclude by saying this, and then we'll leave room for phone calls. I repeat, I wouldn't have spoken today, but Brother Celestino gave the homily. Not even the priests of the Sodalizio knew about this homily. Then there's Brother Celestino's appeal to Dr. Cianci. It's Brother Celestino's appeal. Journalists should be journalists. I believe that Brother Celestino is Dr. Cianci. I report what Dr. Cianci said. Fra Celestino is extremely worried and quite disturbed by his overstepping, by the overstepping in organizing the masses, in saying go to mass where, in saying theologically this is fine and this is not fine. Fra Celestino observes, as a good pragmatic Venetian, that you, Dr. Cianci, without realizing it, I repeat, I am, how shall I put it, compelled to bring this appeal to your attention. He kindly invites you, it seems to me with great respect, Fra Celestino, at this stage here especially, to continue being a journalist, because there are faithful of the remnant who look to you as a leader. There are faithful from the little remnant, unwittingly, who look to Dr. Shanchi as if he were the leader of the Catholic resistance. Oh no, be careful, because if with this confusion we, and I am unfortunately forced to intervene, give space to the real enemies who are Bergoglio and the Vatican wolves. Because Dr. Cianci is a journalist and his work is historical, it's monumental. Monumental not in terms of quantity, but of quality. Dr. Cianci will be remembered, in my opinion, forever as the first and so far only journalist with the qualities of Mr. Dr. Cianci, who had the courage, and we bow before this, and the friendship, moreover, in the face of the crows that are trying in every way now more than ever. But it's not our fault, Dr. Cianci. We needed to coordinate better. Because here they tell me that some have hints that she already knew everything. I don't believe it, of course, and that it was something planned beforehand. I can't believe it. I'd feel betrayed. She knows I don't buy it. I say it publicly like this, so the crows won't try to divide us, they won't succeed. Because the esteem and affection I have for Dr. Shionchi, you can't even imagine. But you see, I have to take... It's about the good providential words this morning from Brother Celestino, where he invites Dr. Shionchi to be a journalist, to not get involved in these pastoral theological aspects because Dr. Shionchi knows, knows, don't step into the world of priests, listen to me. Don't step into the world of priests, you'll end up exhausting yourself. Do you want to believe me? He knows that I am a friend. Do as I say, forget about the world of priests and keep focusing, as Brother Celestino asks, on the investigation. We are merely indebted to her magnificent work. We always invite the faithful to listen to her channel, to support her, to help her. We are the first to have it, even recently with the matter of Ascoli, supported, encouraged, accompanied by prayer. Our prayer is a source of support.
And above all, we strongly encourage it, because we have learned that he has sold 22,000 copies of his book, Codis Ratzinger, and know that many of these are also the result of our hidden work. I invite you to get the book and explore it further. However, these last remarks, even if justified, Fra Celestino and his Delizio ask me, I take on the suggestions of Fra Celestino, as well as Don Ramon, Don Enrico, and so on, which we then publish, Dr. Cianci, your contributions. So as you know, they ask me, because otherwise I say, Father, but you are under the thumb of Dr. Cianci. I'll explain. As you know, the well-known Rodrigo Dominutella Nostra advertises Dr. Cianci's appointments around Italy. A large part of the people go because Dominutella allows the important appointments of Dr. Cianci around Italy to be advertised by Rodrigo Dominutella Nostra. Why not do the reverse then? Never did it. But it's not that I'm criticizing, I'm just saying this to warn you. Father, we need to hurry at this stage when he wants to publicly disclose the reasons that I might have already discussed in person. From this moment, regarding the past few days, especially with Fra Celestino's homily today, which was not agreed upon at all, I see it as a providential sign from heaven. So, pay close attention, everyone. From this homily of Fra Celestino to the public disclosure of the difficulties whenever Father Fare wishes, there will be no meetings, neither private nor public, because first and foremost, people need to know. The public is not the recipient of political party agreements. This is not a political matter. Here there is a small remnant with a Marian priestly association, and that's it. From this moment on, since my time is unfortunately very limited, those beside me know this. I have no time to waste, not because I'm wasting time, but because I believe a private meeting only makes sense when I am assured of overcoming public difficulties. Since someone is telling me, Father, let's not push, let's not push, am I pushing? Let the dear Father Faret take all the time he needs, as we understand what he is going through when he rightly says these are fiery days. And please take all the time you need, but if possible, let us know when you are going to celebrate, because then we find out and it leaves us quite upset, because there are faithful. You see, Father Fair, there was a faithful who told Don Minatella, but didn't you know that Father Fair was in Cremona? Where is he? No, I didn't know. And I went, well, you did well, the Mass is valid, but it is upsetting. This creates confusion. Also, because I heard there was some priest, if I understood correctly, who it's not clear whether he has left or not. In short, can this create pastoral confusion? As long as the Father doesn't respond, if he could suggest, may I ask you a favor, dear Father, please hold the Masses privately or invite them to your home, but do not welcome people from the little remnant, because then I have to deal with the hot potato myself, please. Because then people say, but Father, didn't you know? How come? There are simple people, Father. But Father, why didn't you promote the Mass of Father? Which Mass? He said if invited, he'll go. No, but he was there and some of ours were too. So what do we do? If all this is true, only she can confirm it. If it's false, I don't need to apologize, as we have, you know, some crows and chatterers. So if you can only know whether it's true or not, I believe so. But only you can know. Well, that was the appeal. It seems respectful of Brother Celestino. It's a difficult moment. But perhaps more than ever, God allows it to bring forth authority and responsibility. And then I would like to say one last thing regarding this. Don Enrico is available in the meantime, in the coming days, to explain and present the statute of the Marian Priestly Association. This way, we avoid making mistakes on our part and we learn how to join the association. There will be many who won't get in, that's obvious. But does that mean we give up our identity? And just as we respect others, we would also like to be respected. And that is that. I meant another thing. Tomorrow, 
the catechesis on the little great heroes of faith, once again for the second time, as may often happen for now, will be broadcast in the morning. Then I'll let you know the time, because Maria's catechism will be broadcast in the morning, as there won't be time in the evening due to the prayer meeting here in Tuscany. So, tomorrow I will let you know the exact time, since there is no saint, I'll tell you beforehand, in the morning, when the schedule is set, when the program will be available for you to listen to in the evening, even on catch-up, the segment, Little Great Heroes of Faith, which does us a lot of good. Sabato 2 novembre, carissimi, ci vediamo a Verona per la commemorazione dei fedeli defunti. Portate con voi le immagini, le foto dei vostri cari defunti che metteremo al lato dell'altare e benediremo. Potrete fare l'offerta della messa in suffragio dei vostri cari defunti come Santa Madre Chiesa ci permette di fare a piene mani, pregheremo offrendo loro i suffragi che possono condurli in paradiso. Sabato 2 novembre a Verona alle ore 16.30 preghiamo e celebriamo la messa per i nostri cari defunti. E poi domenica 10 novembre saremo a Cassino per tutto il piccolo resto romano e di dintorni. Partiranno dei pullman eh, a, a costo zero, gratuiti, da Roma per quelli che non hanno come venire a Cassino. Verrete e sarete ricondotti a casa gratuitamente. Per le prenotazioni rivolgetevi alla segreteria di Radio Domina Nostra o al referente regionale del Lazio. E, e poi ancora vi ricordo che il 27 dicembre io celebro l'anniversario della mia ordinazione sacerdotale, 25 anni di messa, il giubileo d'argento, giù in Sicilia, piccola Nazareth Ave Maria per quanto lo vorrete. Abbiamo vissuto un momento di grazia lo scorso 6 ottobre a Milano con migliaia di fedeli, il piccolo resto c'è e il popolo dei rosarianti con la corona del rosario in mano. Andiamo avanti e preghiamo per il trionfo del cuore immacolato di Maria. Verona, 2 novembre, commemorazione dei fedeli defunti. Roma, Cassino, 10 novembre, con la possibilità di venire coi pullman gratuiti da Roma. E poi, 27 dicembre, vi aspetto giù in Sicilia. Tutte le altre tappe saranno rese note nei giorni a venire. Sia lodato Gesù Cristo e avanti con Maria.